Good morning students, I am G. S. Suresh from NIA in front of you to teach again design of RCC structural elements. In the previous class, I had taught you about the balance section, under reinforced section and over reinforced section in case of a singly reinforced beam. You know balance section is the one in which the strain in concrete and steel attain their ultimate value at the same time. In under reinforced section, the ultimate strain in steel attains first before the concrete attains. This makes the beam to be ductile and the strain in concrete reaches to make the beam ductile. In case of the beams where the reinforcement is more than the reinforcement required for the balance section, it is called as over reinforced section. In this case, the extreme fibers of the compression zone in concrete attain the ultimate value before the strain attains. This becomes a brittle failure which is not expected to happen in practice. Because of this, the code does not recommend to provide the over reinforced section. I had also taught you how to get the neutral axis depth, limiting percentage of steel, limiting moment of resistance for balance section and also for the under reinforced section wherein the depth of the neutral axis and the moment of resistance is computed. The design of section for bending moment has also been shown to you in the previous class. I had shown you some problems on the computation of moment of resistance and also on a simple design. More detailed design of beam will be dealt by my, uh, my other colleague Dr. G. Sarangapani in a future class. Now I am trying to give you only the theoretical part before you do the design. We shall continue with our unit 2 on principles of limit state design and ultimate strength of RC section. Today I am going to show you how to calculate the flexural strength of doubly reinforced rectangular section at ultimate and at the end I also introduce you to the flanged section wherein a beam casted along with the slab is called flanged section. So, we shall see more detail at the end of this class. Let us now come back to the same beam which is simply supported over a span of L subjected to any general loading. The loading which I have shown is not UDL. You can see at the ends I have discontinued this UDL and made this as a oblique or a discontinuous loading that means it is any form of loading it could be two point load or one point load or it could be uniformly varying load. Now I am considering the steel also provided on the compression zone in case of simply supported beam I have told you several times that the compression zone occurs at the top and tension zone at the bottom. So the steel which I provide at the bottom in case of this simply supported beam is called as tension zone and the steel is called tension steel. The steel in the compression zone is called as compression steel denoted by ASC. The center distance of the center of gravity of the steel reinforcement in compression zone to the compression phase is called as D dash. So, here you can see this depth I call it as effective cover D dash in this case. Let us look at the strain diagram. At the ultimate, the strain in concrete could be 0 0.0035, which is given in IS code. So, at the depth of the steel, that is D dash, you have the strain which is denoted as epsilon SC. S stands for steel, C stands for compression, and I have also shown where the strain 
the curved portion ceases and becomes horizontal in stress strain curve which is 0.002. So, this is the same diagram students which you have seen in single reinforced section. Here the stress block in which I have shown the maximum stress to be 0.45 FCK at ultimate and the compression reinforcement induces a force of CUS and the compression force in the concrete is written as CUC and the total force in the tension reinforcement is TU. So, I have shown here how the lever arm is between CUC and TU. Now, we shall look into more uh, requirement of the W reinforced section. Why is it required? As you can see here, there are two alternate uh, sections we can think of for the applied moment when it is greater than the limiting section. Suppose you think that the resistance of the singly reinforced section is 500 kilo Newton meter, but the applied moment is 750, then what to do? two alternatives are been suggested here. One is to increase the depth of the section and second is to provide the reinforcement in compression zone and allow more coupled to forearm due to the compressive force which is induced in the reinforcement in compression zone. The beam with its limited depth if reinforced on the tension side only more and more you cannot provide you can provide only up to 25 percent. More than that, it becomes a brittle failure. So, you cannot make the section to be a over reinforced. So, that is restriction makes you to provide a reinforcement in compression zone called as doubly reinforced section. Sometimes, the architects or the user says that I do not want so much depth which you get from the singly reinforced section they restrict you to a particular depth, then that particular depth will not have the required ultimate moment of resistance to match the external bending moment. By increasing the quantity of steel in tension zone, you cannot make more and more as I have already told you. Then what we should do? We have to go for the doubly reinforced section. There is another instance where you require the doubly reinforced section that instance is when the live load is alternatively applied. It is called as repeated loading or reverse cyclic loading. In this case, you require the reinforcement both in compression zone as well as in tension zone because alternatively these two gets interchanged. So, let us now try to understand the ultimate moment of resistance of doubly reinforced section. For that, I have to calculate what is the strain in steel under the compression zone. So, as you can see here in this slide, what is the strain in the steel level in the concrete is obtained by similar triangle property. Let me go back to the previous sketch. Here, I show you. Here, you have got this triangle with the base as 0.0035 and this depth is x u. Consider one more triangle wherein this is epsilon s c and the depth of this is x u minus d dash. d dash is this distance. So, for this if you compare the two triangles you get epsilon s u here it is written as epsilon c u make it as epsilon s c u and that will be equal to 0 0.0035 into 1 minus d dash by x m where x m is the maximum neutral axis depth in case of limiting steel. So, use this and find out what is the strain in compression steel. So, now use the stress strain curve of your steel then find out what is the stress. In case of mild steel you have got the straight line curve up to design strength that is 0.87 Fy by gamma m and then you have the line going horizontal that is straight, but in case of mild steel it is not so. It is having a curvilinear portion after the straight line. For that 
SP 16 special publication 16 gives you the stress value in steel for these grade of steel for different value of D dash by D 0.05, 0.1, 0.15, 0 0.2. What is this D dash by D? D dash is the effective cover in the compression zone to the steel. D is the effective depth. Then the ratio is in this range. Suppose you want in between this, then you interpolate them. It is very easy if it is 0 0.007. So, just you find out for 0 0.05 this is the value and 0 0.1 this is the value, then you interpolate which you well know from your mathematics. So, let me give you an example. Suppose my d dash by d is 0 0.1 and I want to find out what is the stress for 4 and 5, it is 353. Three. So, use this table which is available in SP 16 as table F page 10 and get the value of FSC, where FSC is the stress in compression steel. So, that what I have shown you here. Now, you consider the doubly reinforced section as two parts. Part 1 is having only steel in the tension zone, which is the limiting or balanced section of singly reinforced section. So, here you have got C U C and then you have got here T U. So, this lever arm is Z 1 which is nothing but M U limb. Friends, you know how to calculate M U limb that is either use C U into Z or T U into Z which I have already shown you. In the limiting state, you can calculate M U limb is equal to Q limb into B D square, where Q limb is the moment of resistance factor. Then now you add additional steel at the tension which is I call it as AST 2, where AST 1 is the limiting steel for singly reinforced section that is PT limb you find out. PT is the percentage of steel which is 100 AST by BD. Then add additional steel ASC to match the forces in compression zone and in the tension zone equate the force C U S which is the force in compression steel due to compressive stress. Take the couple C U S and T U 2 and find out M U 2 that is called as moment of resistance of the couple in the doubly reinforced section. Now, M U 1 is M U limb plus M U 2 is C U S into Z 2 or T u 2 into Z 2. What is Z 2? See the students here, the over effective depth is D and this is minus D dash. So, if you deduct one from the other, the Z 2 is D minus D dash. So, that is how you do the calculation which I have shown here. First, I have calculated for the limiting singly reinforced section that is balance section as C u C is equal to 0.36 FCK B into X U limb and T U 1 is 0.875 into F Y into A S T 1. A S T 1 is the limiting steel. So, you can calculate X U limb from this already I have shown you how to calculate this M U limb is given by C u into liver arm that is 0.36 F C k B into X u limb into the liver arm is D minus 0.42 X u limb. I hope uh, you remember what I had taught you in the previous class it is the same thing. Then the limiting percentage of steel is given by this equation 0.414 X u limb by D into F y by F C k this I call it as AST 1, which is obtained as P T limit into the cross section of concrete, which is B into D divided by 100. So, when it becomes doubly reinforced section, M u should be that is the applied moment is greater than the limiting moment. Then what is the additional steel should do? It should produce 
the difference in the moment called as mu2 that is mu minus mu lim. For equilibrium we should have Cus that is the compressive force in compression steel and the additional steel tension they must be equated. From this I get AST2 as FSC is the stress in compression steel which is obtained from the strain diagram where I showed you in the previous slide the table from there you take FSC multiplied by AST divided by 0.87 Fy. So, you calculate AST2 then calculate the additional steel required in the tension zone as AST2 from the following expression MU2 is equal to CUS into Z2 or TU2 into Z2 where Z2 is D minus D dash. So, you can calculate the area of steel required in the compression zone as MU2 divided by FSC into D minus D dash. So, note down this equation friends now we will require this for our future calculation on numerical problems. So, what we do as for the numerical calculation is concerned why I am doing all this I want to design the beam. So, I should know how to calculate the different concepts in doubly reinforced section. First part is the analysis I give you a beam with the reinforcement in tension zone and compression zone I ask you to calculate the moment of resistance. How to do that is shown in this slide that is the procedure for analysis. What do I require for this? I require the grade of concrete, grade of steel, the width of the section, effective depth of the section, effective cover, area of steel in tension zone, area of steel in compression zone. If you give all this I can calculate the moment of resistance like this. First calculate the exact value of XU by equating the total compression force to the total tension force. What is total compression force? It is 0.36 FCK into B into XU plus FSC into ASC. FSC into ASC gives you the compressive force in compression zone steel. This you equate it to the total tensile force in the tension zone that is in steel. So, you get on the right side 0.87 Fy into AST. So, now I calculate XU as I have shown in this sketch 0.87 Fy AST minus FSC into ASC divided by 0.36 FCK into B. So, how to do this? Unless I know FSC, I cannot calculate XU. To calculate FSC, I require the depth of the neutral axis. Then what I do is, I do by trial and error. I try with the value of XU to start with. Say I equate it to limiting depth. I calculate XU from this and I compare with XU max. If XU is less than XU max, now I equate that XU in the equation of strain, I calculate FSC. Redo this, this is called as trial and error procedure. Till the two consecutive values of XU are almost same or say has an error of 0.1 mm or maybe 1 mm. After you calculate XU exactly, then you find out the moment of resistance as compression into Z1 that is the concrete 0.36 FCK BXU into Z1 is D minus 0.42 XU plus what is the compressive force in the compression steel that is FSC into ASC into Z2. What is Z2? Z2 is nothing but D minus D dash. So, how do I design the section? A detailed design will be done later. 
in a separate chapter. In this chapter, we are trying to only understand the basic concept. So, what do I do? The procedure is like this. Step 1, first you find out whether the given section needs doubly reinforced section. How do you do that? You calculate mu lim is equal to q lim b d squared. Q lim is available in table d of SP 16 for grade of concrete and steel. For example, if it is M 20 concrete and Fe 4 and 5, Q lim is 2.76. So, you calculate mu lim compare with the applied moment mu. If mu is greater than mu lim, then you require a doubly reinforced section. That means to say the applied moment has to be resisted by an additional steel provided in the compression zone. Then from the equations already I have shown you, you calculate A steel lim. Then mu 2 that is the additional moment to be carried by compression steel is taken as the applied moment minus mu lim. So, then now you compute the area of steel as mu 2 that is you are taking the moment of the additional steel forces in compression and tension and writing it as mu 2 divided by stress into liver arm. Fsc into d minus d dash. If you take this to the left hand side, this becomes Fsc into Asc into d minus d dash that is the couple. Then from this, we calculate Asc. How do I calculate Fsc? Already I have to told you. Use table f of Sp16. The additional tension required in the tension zone is now calculated by equating CUSC and TU2. In that, I get AST2 is equal to FSC ASC by 0.87 FY. Now, the total tension steel is AST equal to AST1 plus AST2. So, now you can write a cross section which I will demonstrate to you in the coming slides where I will show you how to calculate the total area of steel in the numerical problem. So, we can also use the readily available table in SP 16. We need not remember all these equations. I have shown here an extract from SP 16 for FY 415 and FCK 20. You may not be able to see this if you have your SP 16 with you open page 81 to 92 any page probably this will be in 82 page here this is the table is 46 and here you can see on the vertical column in the first column you have got mu by b d squared mu to be expressed as Newton mm b d squared is taken in mm and mm square. Get that value that should be greater than your q lim that is it should be greater than 2.76 in this case. For that you have got here different ratios of d dash by d 0.05, 0.1, 0.15, 0.2. Get the value of percentage of steel p t and p c. Once you get PT and PC, you can calculate AST as 100 AST by BD, PC is equal to 100 into PSC into BD divided by BD gives you the percentage of steel in concrete. So, you need not do all those equation calculation which I showed you in the previous case. Let us try to understand the concept through few numerical problems. This generally appear in most of the question papers. So, I have taken such one problem here. The problem reads out like this. 
find the moment moment of resistance of a beam for the following data b equal to 230 mm d equal to 450 d means here it is effective depth that is the distance from the center of the steel in tension zone to the extreme concrete fiber and you are using 2 of 16 mm dia in compression and 4 of 20 mm dia in tension zone. The type of steel is Fe415 HYSD that is high yield strength deformed bars. Concrete is M20 and the effective cover that is D dash is 40 mm. So, it is simple calculation it is not so complicated. To start with you should know what is the area of steel in tension, what is the area of steel in compression. Try to recall what I had told you in the previous class. For different diameter of bars I had told you what is the area pi by 4 d squared. For 20 mm dia the area I had written on the board as 314. 4 into 314 gives you 1256 mm square. ASC that is 2 bars of 16 mm, 1 16 mm dia bar has a diameter of 201. So, it is 402 mm square. So, area of steel in compression is known to me, area of steel in tension is known to me. Now, I calculate the required x u from these steps. To start with let us calculate d dash by d. d dash by d is required to calculate the stress in concrete compression steel which is in the top. So, that comes to point not 8. Either I can go for interpolation, but here as the starting value is 0.1 I cannot interpolate because I do not have any value on the other side. So, I will say uh, to be on safer side I take this as 0.1. From table F page 10 of SP 16 if you have with you refer this you find FSC is equal to 353 MPa. So, I also calculate the maximum neutral axis depth given in IS 456 as 0 0.48 d which comes to 228.8 mm. But now if I equate the tensile force to the compressive force I get the neutral axis depth as 0 0.87 Fy AST minus FSC ASC by 0.36 FCK into B. So, this gives X u is equal to 188.15 mm. Actual neutral axis is this. Now, I compare 188.15 with 220.8. So, when I compare X u and X u max, I found that the section is under reinforced. Hence, I can calculate m u by either taking the t u value or taking the c u value. So, I get the moment of resistance as 0 0.36 f c k b into x u into d minus 0 0.42 x u plus a s c into a s c into d minus d dash. Substitute the values you get this as 178.3 into 10 to the power of 6. This is not 106 friends, you take this as 10 to the power of 6 Newton mm. Then it is, I showed you in the previous class how to convert from Newton mm to kilo Newton meter. You have to divide by 10 to the power of 6 or you multiply by 10 to the power of minus 6. So, you get this value as 178.3 kilo Newton meter. So, that is what was required from the question.
we had calculated this moment of resistance. Let us go to another example. In this, I require to design the section. I am given with a moment of mu and I am restricted with the depth to 500 mm as the effective depth and the width of the section is 250 mm and the effective cover in the compression zone is 50 mm. I am using for a change a steel of Fe 500 and I am going to the grade of concrete M30. All these days I was using M20 and Fe 415, so I thought for a change let us change the grade of the steel and concrete. For design I should find out what is the limiting value of the neutral axis depth that is 0.48 into D which gives 230 mm. Then from table D of SP 16, Q limb for M 30 concrete and Fe 500 is 3.99, almost it is 4. So, you can take this Q limb into B D squared as the limiting moment of resistance of a singly reinforced section. So, I substitute these values of B and D here and I divide it by 10 to the power of 6, so that I convert directly this into kilo Newton meter, wherein I get the value of M u limb as 249. So, you can see what is the type of beam I have to design, it is not singly reinforced, I have to design this as a doubly reinforced section because mu applied moment is greater than mu limb. Therefore, I have to calculate what is the limiting moment of resistance steel that is AST limb is PT limb into BD by 100. If you refer to table E of SP 16, it gives you PT limit as 1.13 for M 30 concrete and Fe 500 steel. So, I get area of steel to be 1412.5 mm squared and I note that D dash by D in this case is exactly 0.1. Now, I calculate the additional moment required from the compression steel and AST 2 additional steel in the tension zone which is M u minus M u limb. So, I calculate M u 2 as 500 minus 249 which is 251 kilo Newton meter. Now, I take the internal couple of the additional steels in compression zone and tension zone, I get the value of the area of steel as M u 2 divided by F s c into D minus D dash already twice I have explained to you about this equation. So, from table f for of sp 16 for d dash by d equal to 0 0.1, I have f s c equal to 412 m p a. Then a s c I get from this as 135, 1353.82 mm squared that is I substitute F s c value d minus d dash. And what is the additional steel required in the tension zone other than the limiting steel? You require additional steel there that is given by F s c A s c by 0.87 F y. I got this by equating the compressive force in ten compression steel and tension steel, which I get it as 1282 mm squared. So, what is the total area of steel AST 1 and AST 2? If you add these two, you get 2694.75. But when you design, if you say only AST is so much and ASC, the user cannot understand. We have to make a detailing of this. So, I have shown you how to make a detail. What is the meaning of detailing. 
to find the number of bars required in tension zone and number of bars required in compression zone. After you get few experience on the problems, you can decide what should be the diameter of the bar I have to assume. I will give you a clue here. You know what is the area of one bar of different sizes. Make a rough calculation. Say you assume 25 mm and at the bottom it is the area which I have shown here. One bar of 25 mm is 491, say it is 500. If I provide 5 and odd bars, I will get this as 2500. So, I will try to work out with 25 mm, I get the number as 5.48. I approximate this to or round it off to 6, so that the area will be slightly more than what is required, not very much more. You cannot assume this to be 10, very nominally you can increase the steel. Then number of 25 mm bars required in compression zone is total ASC is 1352 divided by 491, which comes to 2.73. So, I have shown here the sketch, the width of the section is 250, the effective depth is 500. You provide in two layers. Now, on the board I will show you why you require two layers. We will see on a sketch on the board. Friends, you have this width given to be 250. If you provide all the bars in one layer only, then what will happen? The distance between here I have provided 6. To accommodate in 250, the distance between this will become less than 20 mm. So, that means to say there will be no place for the concrete to go to the bottom of the cover what you have provided. So, I should require at least one and a half times the size of the aggregate. You know from your concrete technology that for M20 concrete, I use 20 mm down coarse aggregate. That means to say, if you put together the mortar everything, this distance should be at least greater than 35 mm. To make this, I am providing the steel in two layers. When I provide in two layers, you can see how I have to provide the two layers. Now, you provide one steel at the edge you give a minimum cover say 25 mm, you give a minimum cover 25 mm. So, now whatever the distance left will be definitely greater than 35 mm. Now, you do not put the second layer exactly above the first layer, you provide a cross bar called as spacer bar. This bar is called as spacer bar. This bar will not be continuous. I will show you in the elevation how it looks. Then you provide an additional bar 3 on the top of this. So, now you have the space in between where the concrete can be poured and it will go inside the cover. If you see the same thing in elevation, you have this as the effective depth. And this is the first layer of reinforcement I have provided. Then I use the spacer bar say for every 1 meter like this and then I provide the second layer. So, friends this is the same spacer bar which I have shown. So, this could be the distance you can maintain 1 meter center to center. So, here the concrete if you pour it will be going into the cover. So, what should be the size of this spacer bar? It should be either 
the maximum size of the two bars suppose you provide this 25 and 20 it should be maximum of 25 or it should be one and a half times the coarse aggregate which is 20 mm. So, you can or you can take it equal to the coarse aggregate size. So, this is how you decide the spacer bar in case of the two layers whether it is a doubly reinforced or singly reinforced you have to use this concept. And I have shown on the top here you can go back to the slide there you can see the three bars are provided on the top. So, this sketch is required to be given at the end of the problem. So, for friends we have seen two types of beams that is used in practice. The first one is a singly reinforced section, the second one is a doubly reinforced section, but very often we build the beam individually that means, without any additional member called as slab. Most of the construction what we do for either your house or for a commercial building, we need to provide the beams along with the slab. Generally, the slab will be on the top of the beam that means, the beam is projecting down below the slab. Then there is some contribution of this slab in the compression zone. So, whenever the slab is in the compression zone of a beam that section is called as flanged section. Flange means any extra projection either at the top or bottom is called as flanger section. Hence, this section when we consider whenever the slab and the beam are casted together we call it as monolithic casting. You cast the slab, you cast the beam together then it is said to be acting together. Suppose you cast today a beam and you provide the slab after 28 days then there will not be interaction between the slab and the beam it acts like another wall what you construct using the brick masonry. So, it would not be monolithic if you want to make monolithic you have to do something else and this is not the course where I can teach you about how to make them monolithic this happens in case of precast members. So, here I have shown you some sketch wherein the beams act like rectangular beams. This is a water tank on the top you have a tank and it is supported by beams and columns. These beams are called bracings which act independently as a rectangular beam. In, th in the case of lintel what you provided over opening wherein you will have a small chedja which is ignored and that will be considered as a rectangular beam. And here just now I told you precast slab, you construct the beam separately then you make slab separately you put the precast slab above the beam, no interaction will be there between the beam and the slab, then that section is considered to be rectangular beam. Now, let us move on to the advantages of the flanged beams. The beam having flange on the top of a simply supported beam is called as a T beam. If it is at the end, if the flange is on only one side of the beam, then it is called L beam. If it is on either side, it is T beam. Now, in case of a continuous beam, the at the support the continuous beam will have hogging bending moment at the support, hence tension occurs at the top. Let us try to understand this with the help of the sketch on the board, now I will show you. Now, I have the case of a continuous beam. 
you consider this as a continuous beam. Just I will take two span and I apply the UDL. Now, if I write the bending moment diagram, if you recall your structural analysis 2, I write the negative bending moment diagram like this. Over this, I superpose the simply supported bending moment. This is positive, this is negative, this is positive. So, at the support, I have got hogging bending moment. That means to say the beam bend like this. So, here I have got the tension, here I have got the tension on the top. So, the slab which you provide in the beam, in the continuous beam will be having the slab on the tension zone at the support. Hence, it is not a flanged beam. So, for the contribution of the slab, the slab should be on the compression zone. So, what we understand from this explanation is whenever the slab is on the compression zone, we can treat that as a flanged beam. This sketch shows you a part of the slab and beam, the center of the beam, intermediate beam. You can say similar to what I showed you on the board, the same type of beams are here. This center one can be considered where I have hatched looks like T, the English letter T as a T beam. The effective contribution of the slab to the beam is shown as flange width B or B F and the depth of the slab is called as the slab depth or flange depth D F. If you go to the extreme edge of the slab, there you have a beam, you do not have any slab on the other side, you have only slab on one edge, this is called as L beam. Now, in this chapter, I am going to show you only the computation of a T beam because L beam requires some other concept called as torsion, which will be subjected to torsion force. I will show you one more instance of considering this as a T beam on the board. Consider friends, you have a portico in your house, this portico will be projected out as a cantilever slab. So, this is your wall and this is the projection of the slab. You require to provide a beam on the edge. This beam will be provided as a projection. So, if you can see this, this is the beam, this similar beam is on the other side. Now, if you look at this as a beam, you can write this as a cantilever beam subjected to UDL. So, this will have a bending moment diagram like this, this is negative. The whole of this is under hogging bending moment. Therefore, now the slab, inverted slab in a cantilever beam will be having the compression zone at the bottom. So, the slab is in the compression zone, hence you can treat this as the a T beam. The slab is on the compression zone, hence in inverted beam of a cantilever is considered as a T beam. So, let us look at some other concepts here. Here you can see a series of columns provided in a frame structure and you have the beams in x and y direction. If I take a section across one of the beams, you can see this edge, this is the cross section I have shown, this is L beam and this is a T beam. And in case where there is no contribution of the slab onto the beam at the supports, it is considered as rectangular beam that is on the supports I have taken the section 2 2 that will show you as the rectangular beam. So, I have shown here two cases, 
one is the L beam which is having compression at the top and tension at the bottom. This is a T beam compression at the top and tension at the bottom. This is a rectangular beam at the support. So, we have to understand in a beam slab construction at the mid span it is a T beam and at the support it is a rectangular beam. So, with this I will now go to the summary of today's uh, work before that you can see a flanged section I will explain you in the next class about this. This is a bridge wherein the beam is there and the T beam action takes place how it happens I will show you all this in my next class. So, let us look at the summary for today. Today I explained you about the doubly reinforced section how to calculate the neutral axis depth using the strain diagram wherein I have the strain as 0 0.0035 into 1 minus d dash by x m that is nothing but the limiting neutral axis depth. The moment of resistance is calculated as summation of C u c z 1 and C u s z 2. M u 2 is calculated for the additional moment of resistance to be carried by compression steel and tension steel. So, I calculated compression steel area as A s c equal to M u 2 by F s c into d minus d dash where F s c is obtained corresponding to epsilon s c from table f. Then I calculated the additional steel required from equating the compression force and tension force for the second case. So, A s t equal to A s t 1 plus A s t 2. Just now I introduce you to the concept of T beam and L beam. The monolithic construction of slab and beam together makes it as a flanged beam. So, that is all for today friends we will have more in the next class. See you, have a nice day.